Out of curiosity, I bought myself a Geiger counter. They're not that expensive these days, but uh, other than the smoke detector, I couldn't find anything around the house that was noticeably above background radiation. I guess that's good. But searching the internet for uh, radioactive household stuff, I came across various references about uh, dryer lint being radioactive. This is lint from the uh, filter in our dryer, and if I put the Geiger counter on it, I'm not seeing it pick up anything beyond background radiation. So that seemed like a bunch of quackery. I mean, really, dryers don't make radioactivity. But uh, researching this some more, the dryer actually catches radon decay products that tend to be in the air, and they get caught in a filter, so they get concentrated. But the half-life of these decay products is relatively short, so if you haven't run the dryer in the last couple of hours, you're not going to see very much. So rather than needlessly running my dryer, I'm just going to use this blower to suck some air through some pieces of paper towel to act as a filter. So this has been running for an hour now, and let's test those filters. And what it's picking up now is about 10 times what I got before from background radiation. So this filter did become radioactive. So cool, I can gauge radon levels relatively quickly this way. Then searching around for what radon actually decays into, I came across this article which has a decay series, but also mentions using a balloon to extract the uh, radioactive stuff from the air. And the best way I found of charging up a balloon was to just rub it in my hair. And that's pretty charged up now, just by getting close to it, it starts to come towards me from its charge. And I found 10 minutes already gathers quite a decent amount of radioactivity with that balloon. I just clamped that balloon instead of tying it shut so I didn't have to break the balloon afterwards. So that's background, that's what I got now. So this balloon is about as radioactive as my filter was after about an hour. And I've placed it right here because I've established that the Geiger tube must be on this side of it. And to get repeatable measurements, I made this jig that I can put the Geiger counter into. And it's got a slot on the back, which is exactly where the Geiger tube is. So I can stuff that in here, cover it, and then get more repeatable readings. Now, unfortunately, this Geiger counter can't make a click sound. Whenever it detects something, it just blinks this light. It does have a speaker, so it could make a click sound. But I find these clicks much more satisfying. So on this old Geiger counter, if I put the uh, detector near the balloon, there, that goes off uh, much more satisfyingly. Now, measuring radon levels is usually something that takes days or weeks to get a reading. But with this method, I can get the instantaneous reading in the space of just 15 minutes. I'm not actually capturing the radon itself, but instead the uh, radon decay products, whichever elements radon decays into, and those tend to be electrically charged on account of emitting particles such as electrons. And apparently those are much easier to catch this way with a statically charged balloon. And the half-life of those decay products is much shorter on the order of 20 to 30 minutes which is why whatever I capture has a half-life much shorter than that of radon, which is about four days. But this method isn't perfect either because it depends on how strong a charge I'm able to get onto the balloon, which I think depends on relative humidity in the air because sometimes I get a really good charge and sometimes I don't, or possibly it depends on <laughs> how recently I washed my hair. It would be better to use a piece of fur instead of my hair, but I don't have one. Um, Wool also works, but I don't get nearly as good of a charge out of it as I get out of my hair. I wanted to graph the radioactive decay of my balloon, but there's no way to hook up a computer to this, or even to set the time scale to something usable for that. So I bought this little Geiger counter board, which has got the uh, Geiger tube and the circuitry, and all it does is just kind of emit clicks. And I've got that hooked up to a Raspberry Pi running a little Python script that uh, essentially just counts the clicks and graphs them on the screen. And this is the Python script I wrote for that purpose. There really isn't much to it. And Python is not the best language for this sort of thing. It's not a real-time language, but my main polling loop runs almost a million times per second, so more than fast enough to catch those 200 microsecond pulses out of the Geiger counter. So here's my uh, decay curve that I plotted with 30-second uh, intervals and counting the clicks. 
Interestingly enough, it goes up before it goes down, but when it goes down, it is fairly exponential. So if I put this on a log graph, this is actually a fairly straight line, and I just kind of eyeballed the slope of that and worked out that I had a half-life of about uh, 37 minutes for this uh, relatively straight part on the exponential decay curve. As for this initial increase, I think what's happening is whatever I gather best is actually not the uh, most radioactive yet, so that decays into something else in the space of a few minutes um, that is more detectable by the Geiger counter. Uh, this peak is about uh, 50 intervals in, so about 25 minutes from when I took down the balloon and put it on the Geiger counter. Now this decay with a 37 minute half-life doesn't match any of the uh, radon decay products, so that's a bit of a mystery. Going back to this article that gave me the balloon idea in the first place, um, they observed a half-life of about 38 minutes, which is well within eyeballing margin of error uh, for what I measured. And they also wonder about uh, why the half-life doesn't match any of the uh, radon decay progeny. Um, but uh, with better instrumentation and much more knowledge, they weren't able to answer that either. So if you're a nuclear physicist with uh, expertise in this whole uh, radon decay series thing, uh, leave a comment because I'm curious what's going on here. <laughs> and if you're not an expert, uh, yeah, I always really appreciate those comments from people who understand this much less than I do as well. Now in terms of Geiger counters, aside from not making a clicking sound, the thing I don't like about this one is it runs on lithium-ion batteries, which is great for now, but suppose 10 years from now there's some nuclear disaster. Chances are that lithium battery will be unusable and this whole thing will be unusable. So I bought this one, which is the cheapest one I could find, and it runs off of AA batteries. But uh, this one clicks, but the software on it is so bad, uh, especially if it encounters something, say, 10 times background radiation, it it's almost unusable. And my favorite one is actually this one, which belongs to my father-in-law. It is uh, very much a 1970s style instrument, and it's got a probe that is kind of, uh, you can put on front of something, and it'll detect off like that. But uh, looking around, ones with a probe like that tend to cost 10 times as much as one of these. So uh, for now, I guess one of these is it. What I've got running now is I'm uh, sampling for 20 minute intervals to sample background radiation to see how that varies over time. And it does vary, and I think this thing is to some extent picking up radon because this tube has got a few hundred volts on it, it's electrically charged. And by the looks of it, when the dehumidifier runs, that drives the uh, readings down a little bit because I think that also cleans the air and catches the radon decay products. And running the HRV system also drives it down a bit because of course that vents out the radon. So that could be another interesting topic for the future, but <laughs> I've already gone way down the rabbit hole beyond most people's interest on this one, so <laughs> I doubt I'll ever actually make a video on that because it'll get very few views.